I know most people don't consider keyboards on your phone to be overly exciting things, but this news story posted on August the 9th on 9to5Google is one of the more exciting little Android tidbits I've seen in a little while, and it is focused on the Google Gboard keyboard, which actually just got updated a couple of days ago to better support customization, dare I say, better support customization on tablet large screen devices, move things around, resize things in a much more deliberate and detailed, perhaps would be a good way to say, in a more detailed way. Well, today we have a teardown, like I said, from 9 to 5 Google, showing a whole bunch of really, really interesting features. They have their little uh, disclaimer here where basically they explain what this is. They take an APK from a new release, they decompile it, break it down, and they look for hints for clues of things yet to come, things that aren't actually enabled, but they're in the APK because they are being tested. And man, oh man, are there several really, really big ones. So let's start with this first one here. We'll just go through this article, and I am going to link to this article down below. So if you want to go give them a click and give them a hit for this excellent reporting that they have done, you can go do that. And I would encourage you to do so because I don't want to just be showing you the article and then nobody goes there and actually gives them the click for having written the article. That feels very, very wrong. So do go click that link in the description. Please, please, please. Let's all be fair to one another. Stylus handwriting. So handwriting recognition is not an altogether new thing in Gboard. We've been using it for quite some time. Even those of us using Surface Duo with SwiftKey would often switch to Gboard for the handwriting recognition because Microsoft never delivered that with their own keyboard. So that's not necessarily the new thing. The new thing, which is very interesting, is the ability to write into text fields directly. So we're not talking about you know, clicking on a text field, the keyboard pops up with a big blank space and you write in and then what you wrote gets turned into text in the text field. We're talking about there is a text field and you just write on top of it directly and it goes straight into that box. No keyboard even has to pop up. And this is something they mentioned here that Scribble for the Apple Pencil was uh, introduced with iPad OS number 14, I believe. Does Samsung have the ability to do this with the S Pen? Maybe I'm crazy. I'm not a big pen user, but I think that maybe this is something that they've introduced as well. But anyways, this is very, very cool because again, it allows you to just directly write into a text field like this was a sheet of paper with no keyboard having to pop up, nothing obstructing your view of the page. You can see here they have this video showing exactly what we're talking about. You can see writing directly in the text field and then it turns into text, different gestures like circling, deleting things, scribbling things out. Really, really decent looking controls for this feature that again, hasn't actually even rolled out yet. So this is looking very, very promising. What about voice typing toolbar? If you're like me, you probably use voice typing all the time on your phone. I really struggle to type either with two thumbs or swiping. I'm just really not great at it. I get so many you know, autocorrect fails and so forth that way. So I use the voice typing on my Pixel with assistant typing in particular. I use that all the time where they're now testing the ability whenever you're using that voice typing to basically minimize the keyboard. I'm kind of assuming it's going to look something like this top portion of the keyboard only. So the keys go away and it just, it's going to drop down, allowing you to see much more of the page while you are using that voice typing. Personally, I think that this is a pretty decent idea as well as their voice typing gets better and better. And of course, they've got the ability with the uh, true assistant voice typing to do things like say delete or clear and actually you know edit the things that you're voice typing as you go. This makes more and more sense. And of course, there will be a button you can press to pull the keyboard back up very easily if you want to then type something manually. And of course, this wouldn't be Google News if we didn't include generative AI. So how about AI proofreading? I just mentioned autocorrect failing me quite often. Well, let's use AI to make that a whole lot better. Proofreading, not just spelling, but grammar and punctuation with a tap as well. And you can see the pop-up here showing this exact thing. You've got this misspelled hello readers and it's giving you the correction, not just the word hello, but also the comma there as well. This is a feature that is kind of built into some degree, maybe not with gener generative AI, but it's built into like the edge browser and it's really, really nice to have. I would love to have it on my Google keyboard. So that looks like it's coming relatively soon as well. And for more AI stuff, Emojin 
generated AI stickers. So instead of just, you know, trying to find an emoji or a sticker to fit what you're trying to say with this, you're going to type in a prompt and it's apparently going to generate an emoji for you based on that prompt. I don't think they have any demos of like what that actually looks like in this uh, article because maybe that's not actually functional yet. But that is pretty interesting. I can't tell you how often maybe I'll put in an emoji, but I can't quite find an emoji that fits what I'm trying to say, fits the, the mood, the aesthetic of what I'm trying to communicate. So maybe just generating your own on the fly is the way to go. Very, very interesting feature. All in all, this is really cool. Writing directly in the text fields, generative AI proofreading with not just words, but actually grammar and punctuation, generating emojis on the fly as well. These are some really nice improvements coming to Gboard. We don't know when they're going to be launched and if they're going to be launched. Sometimes these things pop up and then they go away. But several of these appear to be pretty far along in development, so I would say pretty likely we're going to be seeing these things. Pretty likely we're going to be seeing them relatively soon as well. Again, guys, go click that link in the description to 9to5Google. Go read the entire article because there's probably some details I did not verbally call out in this video. You're going to want to subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.